is quite an adventure here at CBSN. It's been a day. Good morning. It's November 7th, 2020. Welcome to CBS This Morning, Saturday. Inching closer, former Vice President Joe Biden increases his lead in three of the remaining battleground states. We'll have the latest on his lead and what he said to the nation last night. Fighting on, President Trump says he'll continue his legal challenges against the election results. We'll have details on his new legal team and their flood of lawsuits. Chief concerns on the day America hits a record 126,000 COVID infections. We learned the president's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, is positive for the virus. The worries over his attendance at an election night party and how it could affect the coming weeks. Tracking Etta, the newest tropical storm strengthens as it marches towards the United States. See the damage already left behind by the storm that has already killed over 100 people. And getting off the ground, flying cars have been promised for nearly 100 years. We'll take you inside the race to create a real viable option to drive into the sky. But first, we begin this morning with a look at today's eye-opener, your world in 90 seconds. It's pretty apparent to everybody who's watching right now and counting the numbers and looking at the universe of outstanding votes that Joe Biden is in a very good position, that Joe Biden is on the brink. The time for tallying votes is winding down. The nation awaiting who will be in the White House for the next four years. If it takes a long time, that's good. It means we're being methodical. We're checking the facts. It's like in carpentry. You measure twice and you cut once. It comes down to about five key states. So for now, Joe Biden, like the rest of us, is left to watch and wait. As slow as it goes, it can be numbing. But never forget, the tallies aren't just numbers. They represent votes and voters. The president is angry and he is disappointed as he admits to some people close to him that the math may not be on his side. There is no future for the Republican Party if we do not stand and fight in this critical moment. President Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, tested positive for COVID-19. Now, we don't know exactly when Mark Meadows tested positive, but he was at the White House on election night. Well, the U.S. Army has been conducting rescues in Honduras, which remains devastated from Hurricane Ada. All that? You're a world-famous beatboxer, and I don't know what that means. Well, beatboxing is the art of drumming with your mouth. <laughs> All right, way to go. And all that matters. Like you, we are all asking, what is taking so long? <laughs> My neighbor in 36B said, Gail, this is agonizing. This is longer than we had to wait between seasons of Game of Thrones. On CBS This Morning, Saturday. Do we know what happens to the screens when the election's done? Because I'd love one. I don't even like it in the house with the kids. Like, guys, gather in. This room, this room, and this room haven't been cleaned. <laughs> And if you look, if you look here, now this is coming into me now. Max, you left your dinner out, which means your pocket money goes down to, it's coming in now, there, 38%. So that's what I'm <laughs> This morning's eye opener is presented by Progressive, making it easy to bundle insurance. <laughs> wow. We're still uh, using ours. Yeah, this is full. <laughs> I right on target. It's a far, good idea. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. also a far cry. Remember Tim Russert and the whiteboard and oh. just erasing? And well, Ed go. still uses the, the whiteboard, I right? I know. There there it is. That, that is oh, very true. He's better, yeah. Welcome to the weekend, everyone. I'm Dana Jacobson, along with Jeff Glore and Michelle Miller. As you can see, we are joining you from CBS News election headquarters in Times Square. But while we're in this temporary home this weekend, we also want to assure you that later on, we're going to have a bunch of the stories you come to expect from us. Technology, books, food, music, all of it. That's a bit later in the show. But first, we have a ton of news to get to this morning. We do indeed. So let's get into the still undecided presidential election now. The race between President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden has slowed to a crawl. Votes in four key states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and Pennsylvania, are still being counted. Joe Biden currently sitting 17 votes shy of the 270 electoral votes needed to win is leading in all four of those states. On Friday, Biden jumped ahead of President Trump in Pennsylvania, thanks in part to a strong showing in Philadelphia. Supporters there filled the streets in hopes of a victory that would put Biden over 270 electoral votes. Meanwhile, supporters of President Trump rallied outside a vote count location in Arizona. The president needs victories in Arizona and all but one of those other toss-up states to win another four years in the White House. Late last night, Biden addressed the nation from Wilmington, Delaware. Nicole Killian is covering the Biden campaign. 
Nicole, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. Former Vice President Joe Biden hopes to be able to address the American people again today. But last night, he made clear he believes he's well on his way to victory and has a mandate to get to work. We're going to win this race. Former Vice President Joe Biden addressing the nation last night, just a few votes shy of reaching the 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. We're on track to over 300 electoral votes electoral college votes, and look at the national numbers. We're going to win this race with a clear majority of the nation behind us. We've gotten over 74 million votes. Let me repeat that, 74 million votes. Biden did not claim victory, but his remarks came at the end of a day that began with him taking over the lead in Pennsylvania and Georgia. Blinked by his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, Biden gave a preview of what his administration's priorities would be. We have serious problems to deal with, from COVID to the economy to racial justice and climate change. We don't have any more time to waste. And he called for an end to what he called partisan warfare. The purpose of our politics, the work of the nation, isn't to fan the flames of conflict, but to solve problems. Before those remarks, aides had planned for Biden to deliver a prime time speech, but that was only if the race had been called. Delaware Senator Chris Coons told reporters he thinks Pennsylvania could be called as early as today, which would be enough to put the former vice president over the top. Dana. All right, Nicole, thank you. We are all anxiously waiting. The Trump campaign says the election is not over and is vowing to fight on with legal challenges to the vote counts. In a tweet last night, Mr. Trump wondered if Biden's leads would reverse as the president's lawsuits move forward. Ben Tracy is at the White House with the latest. Ben, good morning. Dana, good morning. So CBS News has learned that the president is angry and disappointed that some of his Republican allies are not defending him more. But here at the White House, he continues to tell his top aides that he's going to fight on and not concede.